Um, so it just leaves me to hand over to Ruth and to say thank you to where, where are our artists? We've got Anthony, PJ, and Gemma, and Ruth, and we've got, uh, well, Emily sadly can't be with us today either because she's doing an arts event elsewhere, but um, she's represented by her work here in the corner. So we hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon and um, we're going to hand over to Ruth now. Can we give the, the artists a round of applause and thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cathy. And thank you so much, everyone, for being here. It was, it's, sorry. Thank you all so much for being here because it's, it's wonderful for us to be able to share what we make and... Um, a bit about how we think about what we make um, with you. That really kind of brings it alive for us as much as anyone else. Um, so I want to start by saying this exhibition really comes as a result of conversation. And that is just so key. Um, because, so you might have seen that there are critique groups for visual artists that happen every other Tuesday. Um, so we meet and share what we've been working on and um, offer encouragement and bounce ideas around. And um, if you're an artist and that Mommy. sounds cool, then please join us because we'd really like to have you on board. Um, so yeah, uh, this has kind of come as a result of those. And in putting together this show, our conversations led us to several uh, different titles, um, often ending in what sounded like quite existential crises. <laughs> like, um, uh, some of the titles are like, who are we? What are we made of? Why are we here? <laughs> anyway, in the end, we threw out of the window all of these titles because we realized that um, all of our work didn't really fit under one, sort of bandied under one um, message. And, um, uh, and what was more interesting was actually the several different strands that went through all of our works, um, like a conversation does. Um, so yeah, a web of connections rather than a single point. Um, amazingly, I am actually kind of keeping on track with this um, <laughs> list of things that I'm not really reading. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's actually what I'm particularly excited about in this show, um, is rather than a kind of hierarchical model, if you like, where you have one curator who sort of um, brings together lots of artists who don't necessarily know each other beforehand, and then has a, a title and a, a, a show comes together to do that. This is a very flat model, um, where we've, we're just a group of artists who are all equally pulling this all together. So it's been really fun to work like that. Um, and it means that all the work really informs all the rest, partly because um, a lot of the work was actually made for today. <laughs> so that was, that was really exciting. And it was good for a few of us to have a deadline, isn't it, Gemma? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly was for me. Um, yeah, um, so. And another thing I'd like to say is just how wonderful it is that you can have so many different voices in one conversation. So it's very clear here, I think, that, and a lot of you have said, that um, you can definitely see, even though there's no labels and the work's sort of dotted around, you can definitely see whose work belongs to who and whose voice is whose. And that's very exciting to me as well. So um, it'd be great to invite each of us. I'm going to invite myself to talk. That's a bit weird. Um, it would be great to um, share a bit about our thoughts and our processes with you. Um, maybe that will kind of bring the, the work alive a bit more. Um, so yeah, Emmeline's not here, so I'll um, try and kind of say some of the words that she's given me to pass on. So um, let's start with Anthony. <laughs> I'll pass this to you. Um, what inspires, uh, so the question is that uh, starting point, what inspires the work here and how do you go about making it? Well, I'm inspired by, I'm inspired by a variety of um, inspirational sources. Um, uh, first and foremost, when you look at the stars, for instance, I mean, that's a great source of inspiration. I mean, all the space technology and understanding that we have of the heavens, I think that's 
an enormous resource for artists to, uh, and probably an under 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 used resource by artists. Um, so that that has been a, a, a major point of interest recently. Um, science generally, I, I love looking into things like um, quantum mechanics. Not that I'm at all scientifically minded, but I just think it's fascinating. It's just the diversity of what's going on. You look at the, the complexity of, uh, of the world around us, whether it's in, in small um, neutrinos, small particles, or in um, you know, the arrangement of a galaxy formation. You know, there's, there's such complexity around us and such. And I think I, I've, I, I've learned to, to tune into that kind of, or retune into that, that ability to have that childlike wonder when you look at things and not be so jaded by life um, that we lose that ability to be surprised by the world around us. Thank you, amazing. So Gemma, uh, no sorry, PJ actually. <laughs> sorry Gemma. <laughs> right, take it away. Um, ooh. <laughs> the art that I'm showing at the moment is all very kind of um, based on... Okay, all right, sorry everyone. Um, the art that I'm showing at the moment um, really is based on creation myths and making up creation myths. I find the whole idea of the narratives that we tell ourselves and where we come from really shape who we are. Um, so, and also, I like creation myths because they usually involve some kind of jeopardy, usually something going wrong, and that's how we come around. And I feel like as humans, we always kind of want to make things simple and straightforward and have some kind of organization and simplicity and order in our life when actually life is quite disordered. And a lot of creativity comes out of disorder. We think it always comes out of, you know, being able to formulate things and put things together. But it's often you need the chaos for art to come out of that. And I don't think as human beings we really, especially in an age that's becoming more technological, that technological, we actually appreciate the chaos and um, how that actually does give space for people to be creative. Um, there's always, you know, the mythology about crazy artists and all the rest of it. But I think that mythology is important in that because often a disorganized brain is a creative brain. And um, more disorder. <laughs> Everyone right. Excellent. Thanks very much, PJ. Um, yeah. um, and Gemma, take it away. Uh, so the movie, the portrait, doesn't link with maybe what the rest is going over here, but um, I guess in the thinking here we are, um, I did paint this one a while ago, but it served me and my mum in the corner. And it, I was thinking about what makes me. And there is a beautiful picture by Raphael in the Louvre with him, with his hand on the shoulder of his um, proche. Um, and I just wanted to convey um, what my mum has given to me and the hard work. And then I called it the engineer, but it's more about, like, you know, um, you know uh, what's going forward and the, and, and the support that um, people around us give us. Um, but typically why I got into art was I just everything has to be uh, in making sense of the world um, I make sense of the world in pictorial format I'm not a very audible person and so um, anything I have a question of and a lot of my work is um, it's kind of a bit like self-portrait but they're not it's not really me <laughs> but I'm just trying to make sense of the situation that I'm in at the moment and in, in a very pictorial way and um, and going forward, where you know I'm now um, a mom, a, a newish mom, and um, I, stories are becoming even more important to me. I'm, I'm reading um, nursery stories, but then I've been thinking about um, what, like, how you get gut feelings about things, and a little bit like I guess uh, Red Riding Hood story, things like that, and about how that um, puts a sense of a bit of a fear into you that you need to have in later life to get yourself out of those situations. Um, but when people say stories, they often think about words. But for me, it's all about the pictures. The pictures are a thousand words. So I'm always, yeah, looking at, uh, at the images. So yeah, it's a bit storytelling. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, 
these little weird things like Emily. What's your thing? Emily. Yeah. So um, now I'm going to say something on behalf of Emmeline, who's not here. She's at Rose, Rosemore um, at the fair there, which is exciting. Um, so this is Emmeline's work here. Um, actually, that's also one of Emmeline's that um, Annie is sitting on. <laughs> it's, uh, no, 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 it's, no, it's four sitting on. No, 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 Annie, sit down, sit down, it's for that. <laughs> Just wanted to, you know, um, she's, um, yeah, it's a usable artwork. Um, so the the original artwork on the easel um, is what um, Emmeline has turned into a print on a fabric and then also on paper inside the lampshade. And kind of a little bit like what Gemma was just saying about um, sort of what's going on on the inside, the emotions and the kind of internal um, life. And that's what Emmeline has been thinking about. She took a very similar um, title that we kind of at one point <laughs> were thinking about using um, to formulate that work um, and essentially it's about that the inside is what counts um, so Emmeline's work is very bold and bright colors and very decorative so it's kind of an interesting dialogue because it's on the that's on the outside but what she's wanting to say with the lamp where it's quite plain on the outside and then on the inside it's really really colorful and um, intricate and there's a lot going on in there and that's where the lamp is so that's that's Emmeline's Emmeline's work. Yes, then the stitching, and there's a little needle that's been left um, sort of halfway through a stitch because it's like our work isn't really ever done. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing. Um, okay, so Ruth. Uh, Ruth, what inspires your work here, and how do you go about making it? Well, um, it's funny because I, I sometimes struggle to kind of put into words my own work. It's, it's easier to talk about someone else's. But um, so, yeah, we all do. Um, my paintings are the thick oil paintings um, here and the um, few there. And there's a kind of few rows of little ones up there. Lately, I've been painting a lot of trees. Um, and I'm very interested in our relationship with our material world, basically. Um, and how we use the stuff um, of the world to kind of um, make new things that have new meanings. Um, I find that very interesting, that little tiny bit there. Um, and I like using paint because of this sort of like pull and push between um, something that's very material and um, is flat, I guess, um, but it also lets you kind of think that there's depth there. So you sort of like, it's a thing that happens in your mind. It's sort of like, you know what it is, but you also know what it's saying. And it's, um, so I enjoyed that about paint. And um, so that's why a lot of them have very, they're quite abstract as well as being figurative. So there's a pull and push there, which I really enjoy that I'm, a, I'm an observational painter and I go out and paint on plein air, um, and all the paintings here, and all the paintings I really do, are done in one sitting. I very rarely go back into it, because it's like, that moment's happened, I can't revisit that. I'm a different person, even an hour later, like, let alone <laughs> um, a day later. And um, so, yeah, um, painting from observation, it's, there's a kind of objective thing there, that you're trying to paint truthfully what you're looking at, but at the same time, you're, you can't ever do that. And so the paintings are quite loose and thick and free and quite imaginative because of that dialogue between, you know, you're, you can only see the world from your own subjective sort of point of view. Um, so that's me. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. I was going to open up the floor to see if there were any questions that anyone has for any of us. It's okay if there's not. <laughs> you don't have to. I should have warned you that there might have been an opportunity. But um, if not, then... Yeah? Oh, mix my greens. Oh, I love that sort of question. Uh, um, well, I... I, I don't really have a rule, to be honest. I tend to just have ultramarine and um, lemon and Indian yellow. Um, 
and mix them all from that. But I have been dabbling in a few green pigments after a long debate with uh, Peter Rose, who I don't think is here, but you might know. <laughs> yeah. He was saying about how it's quite good to actually to have a green tube, a green pigment, because um, of how the light um, works, the waves, it's all in the waves. <laughs> um, so if you've got a blue and a yellow, they kind of interfere with each other rather than if you've actually got a green pigment, then it sort of actually emits more green light, something like that, which was interesting. So I've been trying that out, but there's a whole load of different greens that I've been dabbling in, but mainly it's lemon yellow, Indian yellow and ultramarine blue. Thanks so much. I love that question. <laughs> yeah, anybody else? Susie? I wonder if you could each say which pictures you actually did for this exhibition. Oh, that's a nice idea, yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, these three on this one, and then one little one leaning up, uh, the more vibrant one against that door. Um, <laughs> PJ. PJ didn't do any. Oh, no, I put that one together. Yeah, the one behind Noah. <laughs> I finished one. Yeah. <laughs> Gemma was uh, these two pastel painting, uh, pastel drawings. Is that right? Yeah. And Anthony. I, I, I didn't do it. Oh goodness me! I was uh, sold on a. <laughs> okay. Anyway, forget everything I just said. Um, yeah. No. But thanks for that. <laughs> I would just say how <clears throat> how it's been really enjoyable um, talking to other artists and trying to. It's been really nice putting your work next to other artists' work because I feel like it's been so interesting having a conversation between the art as opposed to just the artist, if you see what I mean. And I notice how things, when my picture is next to someone else's work, that they kind of talk to each other. And that's been so exciting and something that I haven't really experienced in my artistic practice up to now. <laughs> so it's been great. So I'd really like to thank all the other artists I work with on this moment because it's been really lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's cool because it's we're brought together because of our locality, really. Yeah, and really and that's yeah. so cool. But um, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, please. Yes, you're Oh, it's very unfashionable at the moment. <laughs> They're signed on the back. <laughs> we can't quite let go of that. Um, <laughs> the reason I don't sign any of my paintings is because I feel there's no purpose for my signature on it. You know, it doesn't actually inform the image, so why put it on? Yeah, I guess if you think of it being like a voice in this room I mean everyone's voice is so different I guess it's you don't when you're in a conversation you don't sort of do an over and out Ruth said Ruth said <laughs> um, so maybe there's something like that in there um, yeah yeah maybe it's less about the artist's kind of fingerprint as much as the work and its life there's such a thing in fine art where um Providence becomes such an important feature that sometimes it's quite nice to kick against that and, and be like, the art has to stand on it. I used to have this, I went through a stage of doing lots of very small pictures and I used to imagine I'd just leave them somewhere and it would be, would anyone come and pick it up? Would anyone take ownership of it? Whereas in the art world, it seems to be very much like um, people check who it's by before they check whether the image speaks to them. So it's a slight kind of, you know, Two fingers up to that slightly for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like the image works as a picture or it doesn't work, you know, and, and, and the fact that it was painted or drawn by a particular person really shouldn't have, an, you know, an imprint on it at all. So. Strangely, um, because my work's on paper, I do sign them because that is the normal practice with, with works on paper to sign them. But yeah. But also yours is um, done by ink, and I think there is a difference because there is a, you know, a, a, we write with pens. Do you know what I mean? We sign things with yeah. pens. So I think there's yeah. a different kind of relation. It's much more intimate in a funny sort of way. So. Thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Shall I say thank you? 
Oh yeah, cats in the doorway. Um, another baby. She was who we were ca clapping to earlier. Um, anyway, yeah, well, thank you all for coming and enjoy the rest of the cake. And there's lots more tea and coffee and cake to be had. <laughs> Nigel's feeling unloved. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Cool. Thank you so much for coming, everybody.